Hi, welcome back girls and boys. This is the week of November 23rd through 27th and this is day one. This is a short week because we have a holiday coming up. Can any of you tell me what holiday we have this week? I'll give you a clue if you can't remember. It's when friends and family gather, it may be a very small gathering this year, um, and sit together at a table and eat and give thanks. I gave you a clue in the thanks part. It is Thanksgiving, and that is a national holiday we celebrate in the United States every year. Let's review the items we're going to need, and then we'll get started. What's this? Our nameplate. We always write on it with this, our dry erase marker. You're also going to need your Play-Doh and a few sheets. The letter we're studying is D. Think of D for dinner, D for drums. We're going to be working on the D with Play-Doh and writing on the back. We'll also need this sheet, which it has a stove, an apple, and the sun right here on the front. That's the only side we're going to be using today. And then for the colored sheet, this is page 65, and it has a frog up here on top and two little frogs on the bottom. I think that's it. I think that's all you need to get started. So let's go ahead and get your name played out and your dry erase marker. Take your time, follow the dot to dots, and when you're through, hold it up for me. I always prefer you go nice and slow and get it right than to rush through and go too fast. Let's see how well you did. There you go. Nice work. If you need some extra time, feel free to put it on pause. I want to say hi to all of you out there. So, hello to Owen and Bennett and Caitlin and Trey Sean and also to Cash and Briggs and Justin and our friend Jessa Elias Evelyn Brenda If you see your name I want you to say it out loud Hi Timmy and Christopher Kaylee, Kenley, Carson, Easton, Austin, Tempe, and Hayden. Welcome to all of you. Well, our letter, like I said, is the letter D. And I want you to pretend you're playing drums, and we're going to make this sound da 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 da. That's the letter D sound. Da da da. Let's get our Play-Doh out, and we are going to make the capital D and the lowercase D with our Play-Doh. <coughs> there we go. We have a straight line going up and down. Here's the first line you're going to make with the D. <clears throat> and then the next one that's going to go around. 
long ways. This one's going to have to be a long piece of Play-Doh. Now that you know the sound, duh, 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 I bet you can think of some words that start with a D. Many of you like this type of animal. We talk about it quite a bit at school. Prehistoric, very large. Can you think of what I'm thinking of? A dinosaur. So here we go, straight line and it loops all the way around. Duh, duh. Now for the lowercase d, we're going to have to get a little more Play-Doh and we're going to go up and down. That's what we make first. My first set of Play-Doh fell off and that's fine if it does. We're just going to make the lowercase d now. Straight up and down. And then to finish off this, we're going to circle back around this way. I'm going to give you a clue that's going to help you remember which direction you go on the B and the D. At your age, a lot of students get confused about how to make the B and how to make the D. <clears throat> so I'll show you. I'm going to make like a little picture too. I'm going to make a bed. It starts with B. B. E. And the last one is... The D. And then I'm going to act like there's a person laying on the bed and they're sleeping. B ed. That's the letter B and that's the letter D. And if you think of it like this is the headboard and this is the footboard here, that's an easy way to remember because bed starts with B the b sound, and it ends with a d sound, bed. So the d is going to go this direction because it's the footboard, bed. might seem a little confusing when we're at school. We can talk about that more. But for now, this is how you make the d. It's the long line, and then you loop back around. <clears throat> if you think about it like like a bed, you loop back toward the person in bed. You go, whoop, make sure you hold up their feet. That's a D. Now let's turn the page over and I'm going to show you <coughs> how to write the letter D a few times. So you should be on this side now. It has a picture of a D doll. So for the capital, you start where the dot is, you go straight down, and then you loop all the way around. There's a capital D. Now for the lowercase d, you go straight down, and then you loop back around to your left. I want you to try that a few more times. You may put the video on pause and fill up the page with D, D, D. Remember what I said? It makes the D, D, D sound like you're drumming. You're hitting a drum. Can you do that with me? Faster I go, more D sounds I make. The slower I go, the fewer I make. <clears throat> I like this sheet quite a bit. Let's go ahead and pull this out now. It has the pictures on the front, starting with a stove oven combination here. Apple, sun, pencil, 
a duck. Oh, look at that. That's a fire. Some of you like to go outside or go camping and then there's an outdoor fire here. And we have a hot cup of coffee or tea. There we have a bed, kind of like what I was just talking about, a bed. And then we have a hot candle. What I want you to do is circle things on the page here that get hot, hot. So let's look at each one. You cook food on the stove top or you can put it in the oven to bake. So does this get hot? It sure does. So let's circle this. The next one's an apple. Can you hold an apple without hurting your hand because it's it's just room temperature, right? It's not going to be so hot that it burns you. So that's not hot. How about the next one? Can the sun be really hot? It can be. It's not all the time. Kind of like a stove and oven, unless it's turned on, it's not going to be hot. But for the sun, it depends what type of year it is. And it depends where you are. If you're in Florida and it's really sunny, you can get a sun burn. So it could be really, really hot. So there we have the sun can be hot. How about a pencil? Do you ever fear burning your hands because you have a pencil in your hand? Like here I have a marker. I'm not afraid of getting burnt by that. So no, I'm not going to circle a pencil. How about a duck? A duck is fine. It's not going to uh, cause damage to you because it's so hot. A duck is not hot. Now, how about a fire? Yes, a fire is always hot. So let's circle this. Can you do the next row and see what you can find? There are two items that get really hot. Some of you already finished. Good work. A hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of tea, hot cocoa, and you can tell it's hot because it's showing heat right here. Here we have a bed. That's not hot, is it? And a candle. It has a flame. So yes, this candle is very hot especially right up here, it has the flame. That's the hot part. So you should have circled the stove, the sun, the fire, the cup of hot drink here, whether it's hot cocoa or hot coffee or tea, and the candle. Does yours look like this? Nice work. Yeah, there are things in this world that are hot and some things are really cold. And some things are just what we call room temperature. So for example, an ice cube is really cold. But then if you keep it outside the, the freezer long enough, it starts to melt and melt and melt until it just gets to be water. And at that point, it's not hot or it's not cold. <clears throat> Here we go. We're going to go all the way across and find our way to our friends on the bottom. What we're going to do is follow this pattern. The pattern is triangle, circle, triangle, circle. So we're going to go all the way along and find that pattern. So we have triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle. Oh, that doesn't work. So we can't go any further there. But we can go this way. Here's a circle. Triangle, circle, oh, we can't go there because we're not using squares. We can go this direction. Triangle, circle, which way should I go? Over here? Good job. We have triangle, circle, triangle. Now which way do I go? To the circle or to the square? The square we don't want to go near. So let's go this way. We go circle, triangle, circle, and there I get to see my buddies. So let's make connecting lines. We have triangle, circle, <clears throat> triangle, circle, triangle, circle, 
triangle circle, triangle circle, triangle circle, triangle circle, triangle circle, triangle circle, and triangle circle. We did it the whole way. And look at that, we made a great maze to go see our friends. Nice work. What I'd like to do is review <clears throat> the letters that we've learned so far this school year. I know we've learned lots of letters. And you might even have your own set of letters at home. And then you can keep up with me and pull out some uh, alphabet cards and see if you can find these. If you want to go back on this video and pause and rewind it, that would be great. We'll review some letters that we've recently learned too. So the first one is D, D, D. It's our letter of the week. What letter is this? D for duck. D. We learned this last week. Like, mmm, something tasted yummy. Mmm. <clears throat> Monkey. This is the letter M. Er. Remember we had like a doggy and he was yanking at a rag making an er sound. Er. Rainbow. This is the R. Er. <clears throat> Here we have like something's hot. And this is a house. H for house. A, A, A. Apple. And our motion for that is like an ant running up our arm. A, A, A. A, apple. Here we have an I. And the thing about vowels, they can make their own sound like I or I. And they have two sounds. Just like apple can be A, like ape, or A for apple. So it has two sounds. The letter I can say I or I. Here we have an I, iguana. I, I, I. How about this? Sun. Think of it like a s snake. S see that shape there? S sun. S. S. Pig. This is the letter p, -p, -p for p -p pig. This is t. Turtle, t, t, turtle, T for turtle. K, k, k. The C and the K both make the K sound. This is C for k, cat. And here we have K, k, k kite. Here we have another vowel. It can say either E, like eagle, or E. For egg, the letter E. <clears throat> so let's go faster. We're going to just simply say the letters D, M, R, H, A, I. S, P, T, C, K, and E. I know some of you are really working hard on learning some of your letters, so start with the letters in your first name. That's a great starting point. Now let's review some colors. Some of you are so good at this. When I hold it up, I want you to say the color. Green, like grass. Yellow. Purple. 
black. I can hear some of you. Thank you. What color? Red. Pink. Orange. White. Blue. And brown. I want to tell you a little story related to this color, orange. In the classroom last week, we planted some seeds, some pumpkin seeds. And I wanted to let you know they're starting to actually already grow. It didn't take long. So when you get back to class, we're going to be observing. That's when we use our eyes and look around and see what we can see and talk about it. And you're going to see some roots and there's actually something coming out of the seed now. I can't wait for you to see that. I think you'll enjoy looking at it. And we'll draw some pictures too. I want to review some shapes with you. Let's see if you can remember your shapes. It's been a little while since uh, some of you have gone through your shapes. So let's see if you remember them. Heart. I can hear you good. Star. Diamond. Oval. Here we have a circle. Square. Has three sides. Like a tricycle has three wheels. A triangle has three angles. Where they have the points here. There are three of them. One, two, three. And last but not least, rectangle. Good job. Those are all the shapes that we study. Since we have Thanksgiving coming up, I thought this would be a really good book to look at. It's called My Very Best Manners. And it's by Liza Charlesworth. And the person who drew the pictures is Mick Reed. So the person who wrote the word is the author and the person who drew the pictures is the illustrator. You may not know what manners means. So let me explain manners. It's like when you're on good behavior, it's what you should do when you're sitting at a table. You should follow these guidelines. It talks about how to have good manners at the table. Can you think of any good manners you would have at the table? Think about Thanksgiving. Are there things that maybe would be good for you to do while you're sitting at a table? How about the way you sit? So do you, should you lay your head on the table? No, you should sit up straight. How about when you eat your food, should you just use your fingers? <laughs> you can use utensils or forks and spoons and knives. That's another word for utensils. And how about if somebody would like something that's near you and they say, may I have the rolls? What do you do? You pass the food their way. I know you're very young and you're learning your manners still, but this will just give you a good review on how to behave at the table. It's called My Very Best Manners. This is the title page. It says it again, My Very Best Manners, and it has the author and the illustrator again. I always sit up tall. I use my very best manners. I always pass the food. So when somebody asks if they may have something, pass the food. I use my very best manners. I always chew with my mouth closed. It's a very good rule for manners. So when you're chewing your food, let's practice that. Act like you put something in your mouth. Can you act like you're chewing and keep your lips closed? That's a great rule. I use my very best manners. 
guess what? I read a book about the circus today. It says I always talk about my day. That's a great idea to talk about what's happened during your day while you're sitting at the table. I use my very best manners. This is a great one. I always wipe my face. It's easy to get sauce or a drink, let's say milk ring or something, on your lips to always wipe your face. I use my very best manners. What's funny about this picture, we have a cat that's jumping over, we have a clown whose face is in the plate, and it's saying, my friends are still learning. They're still learning how to use good manners. And it's fine if you're still learning too. We're all in this together. And that is how you sit at a table and behave and use nice manners. The next book I'm going to read, sometimes we have two, um, it's called I'm Thankful Each Day. And look how excited this little boy is. And it's by Kay Hallinan. That's the person who wrote the book. And since it doesn't list an illustrator, this person also drew the picture. They did both. They're the author, they wrote the words, and the illustrator, they drew the pictures. Here we have the front cover, the back cover, and what's that part called that holds it all together? You're right, it's called the spine. Here we have the title page. Do you have any idea what this book might be about? It's called I'm Thankful Each Day. Sometimes pictures help us too. This little boy is picking an apple and is smiling. So maybe the boy's thankful for food. I'm thankful each day for the blessings I see and for all the gifts that are given to me. And counting the stars at the edge of the sea, I can't help but feel they were put there for me. Are you thankful for the sky and the stars and for every day? I'm thankful for summers and warm golden days. I'm thankful for autumns and orange pumpkin haze. So this little boy lives where there are seasons just like we have seasons. I'm thankful for meadows and bright colored flowers. I'm thankful for raindrops and soft summer showers. He's thankful for everything. Showers and flowers. Each sunset is special. Each sunrise is new. Each breeze in the tree is a promise come true. Each evening's a wonder where beauty abounds. That means there's lots and lots of beauty. Sees a butterfly. I'm thankful for friends, for laughing and sharing. I'm thankful for family, for loving and caring. That looks like Thanksgiving to me. 